Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Better. Good morning. Good morning. Every time I come, I'm so much pressure. You know, last time he said I climbed every mountain. Where is Michael here? It's not, now he's saying I've, I've swam across 14 oceans. Are there 14 oceans? I don't even know. I mean, really. I'm, I've been so busy that I've forgotten about preparing for today's presentation. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. I've been climbing mountains since last time I came here. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, cash flow management. Um, and it's a very important topic. Because today the flavor seems to be by show of hands. By show of hands, which one do you think is the most important? A, profits. B, cash flows. C, you don't know. D, you don't care. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Hopefully it's not you don't care, right? I mean, so I, I would go with the cash flows exactly. So we're going to talk today about um, why cash flows are important, how do you manage cash flows, what's the impact of mismanaging cash flows, and we have a cash flow workshop going on the side as well. Uh, thank you for coming, and I uh, hope uh, this is quite informative and entertaining as well. So to start off with, um, financial statements. Um, I know I think it's quite boring, you know, debits, credits, who cares about you know, assets and liabilities. But we need to talk about this to understand what is financial management. How do you manage your finances? There are three things you should know, basically, as an entrepreneur. Your income statement tells you what, how much money you made. Your balance sheet tells you how much assets and liabilities you have. And your cash flow statement tells you how much cash you made or how much cash you lost. Ideally, the former, not the latter. Very important you should understand it, right? We're going to talk about number three here, the cash flow statement, and, and how that's going to help you drive business success. A recent poll was done in the US, and they found that 52% of the reason why SMEs failed in the first two years was because of poor cash flow management. Now, that's a big number. Yeah, 52% is a huge number. Now, you would think that, you know, the other, other reasons, like lack of experience and competence, made up 48%. But the majority was cash flows and finances generally. So why is it important? Can I ask you a question? Is it possible that you can be profit rich and cash poor? You know what I'm talking about. Is it possible you can tell that you have fantastic profit? Your business is very profitable, right? Yes, but nothing in the bank. Is it possible? Yes. Why do you think that's possible? How does that happen? Isn't profit equal to cash? Isn't profit equal to cash? Come on, guys, let's get some responses. Either I say yes or no, or I don't care. <laughs> no, and that's one fundamental misconception because profits are not cash. When you make money, that's profits. Okay, that's your margins. That's based on what you sold and what you have to pay. Okay, it is not the same as cash. And many a time, you have issues with this misconception. I have been to meetings of large companies. I've been to meetings of small companies. And entrepreneurs and CEOs alike do not seem to get this fundamental difference between profit and cash. They think because the business is highly profitable, it will survive without cash. You cannot survive without cash. You can survive without profits, yes, for some time, but you can't survive without cash. In the cash flow statement, which is the focus of today, there are three things that you should look at. The operating cash flows is basically your focus. That's where you made money. That's where you lose money as well, by the way. Okay. If you look at your cash flow statement, all the payments you made to suppliers, the cash you got from customers, you net it off, you get something called cash flow from operating activities. I've seen companies which have profits of 1.4 billion dirhams. Okay. I can't tell you which company. Okay. You can tell me in private, we meet after this. 1.4 billion dirhams of profits, and this cash flow from operating is minus 250 million dirhams. Okay. Basically, basically, the company is hugely profitable, right? I mean, 1.4 billion is a big amount, right? It's more than my salary and your salary combined. But minus 250 million dirhams is a huge loss. How did that happen? Because you sell on credit. Because you give credit to customers. Because your suppliers don't give you credit. Because you have to pay advanced suppliers, right? So what happens? You sell, 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 sell. You have fantastic salespeople. You have great margins. You go home telling your wife and kids, wow, I made it, right? Because my company is a 20 million dirham company. When you say 20 million dirham company, are you talking about cash? No, who wants to talk about cash, right? Cash is not glamorous, cash is not sexy, right? You want to talk about what? Revenue, exactly. You're talking about revenue, yes? When you go to parties and you want to talk to your friends, you go to clubs, you go to meetings, what do you talk about? My top line, 
my top line revenue was how much? X million. You never talk about how much cash you made because no one wants to hear about cash, right? Cash is not very interesting. Unfortunately, cash is the most important. Okay? And as most things in life, you focus on what is not so important at the risk of looking at what is not you know, uh, important. So, operating activities, inflows. For most of you out here, you have selling services or goods, you have sale of goods, sale of trading, um, items, uh, services. And your outflows, for most of you, is number two. It's not taxes or internet expenses. It's your wages, salaries, rent, yes? Advertising, selling expenses. Yeah. Now, you have investing and you have financing as well, right? Now, what are the challenges here? And this is what I want to talk to you about today. What are the key challenges that you will be facing or you are facing? Okay. Number one is what you call drags on liquidity. The first one here. Slow down of inflows. We in finance call them drags. You know, we like to use fancy jargon in finance, by the way. We love to impress people. It's a drag. Okay. What's a drag? Drag simply means cash came in later. Because of three reasons. A, you can't sell what you bought. B, you can't collect money from what you sold. And C, no bank is willing to give you money. Right? To finance your working capital. We will talk about how to deal with these drags. The other reason why you get into problems in cash is the second one here, the pools and liquidity. What does this mean? This means your outflows are getting accelerated. You're spending too much money. Cash is bleeding. You're spending cash. How does this happen? Number one, the first one there, is the reason why it happens a lot of the time. Because irrespective of whether you sold one dirham of goods or services or not, irrespective of whether you have a client or not, you still have to pay salaries. You still have to pay rent. You still have to spend money on advertising. We call them overheads, we call them fixed costs. Okay? And these are things that you must keep your eyes on. Which is why I always strongly advise SMEs, keep your cost base low. Because the risk for SMEs is highest among all companies. Keep your cost base low. Don't buy, lease. Don't hire, outsource. There are lots of ways of managing this. We can talk about that as well at the workshop. Short credit term from suppliers. How many of you have had suppliers who say, I can't give you credit because you're too small for me? How many of you? How many of you have to, have to make advance payments to the same supplier? How many of you wish that the supplier would give you 10 years credit? <laughs> Doesn't happen. I'm just getting carried away here. How many of you wish that all your customers would pay you in cash? <laughs> so we're living in dreamland here. I'm getting into fantasy land. And number three, no credit from suppliers. We're talking making advance payments. I face this in my business. I've seen lots of my clients face the same business issues. You have to pay advance. Where do you get the money from? Well, if you have to pay on salaries and rent, and if your customers are not paying you on time, where is the money going to come to pay suppliers? Right? Becomes an issue. So, those are the challenges that you face. I'm sure you know about it. I'm not telling you something very insightful. I just put it on a nice PowerPoint with bullet points. Right? But it's good to know what the issues are. And this nice chart here is what I call the cash conversion cycle, the three C's. Ganesh talked about another three C's. I'm going to talk about my version of three C's. This is the most important analysis or cycle in terms of managing your cash. If you're in the business of trading or manufacturing, or sometimes even in services, when you buy on credit from suppliers, over here in the, at the top, you buy raw materials on credit. What do you do? It goes into the production process, yes? Work in progress, then becomes finished goods. Then what happens? If you're lucky, you sell it. If you're unlucky, it remains in stock. And you write it down. Let's assume you're lucky and you sell it. What happens then? You hope to collect money. Yes? It's a hope. Okay. If the supplier hasn't parked the car in Dubai airport and run away, then you collect the money. Okay. And with the money that he gave you, what do you do now? You pay the supplier. This nice, neat circle is called the cash conversion cycle. And for every entrepreneur, it is compulsory understanding. Because your working capital, your liquidity is driven by this. Any change in this will affect your cash flows. Any change in this will affect your need for money. Any change in this will make you either more cash rich or less cash rich. Any change in this will increase your bank borrowings, reduce your bank borrowings. Any change in this will probably shut down your business if you're not careful. Okay? Very simple. Okay. The impact. What happens if the cash flow cycle doesn't work the way you think it works or should work? Number one, bad debts. Has anyone heard about bad debts? 
Yes? You don't want to hear about bad debt, do you? You want to hear about good debts. <laughs> bad debts are what happens when you don't collect customers' money. Bad debts are what happens when you sell to bad customers, bad credit customers. They don't pay you. They run away. Yes? And you can't do anything about it. Yes? Number two, less cash inflows due to bad debts. Because the customer is not going to pay you, and he expected, you expected him to pay you so that you can pay your suppliers, you're going to have cash flow problems because of less cash inflows. Obsolete inventory. The inventory that you bought because you couldn't sell it, because it's obsolete, because no one wants what you bought, it is lying in your warehouse, you're paying interest on in the money, you're paying warehousing costs, you're paying insurance charges, you're paying transport logistics, it's piling up day after day, the clock is ticking. Okay. And if you want to sell it, what do you do? You have to offer? Discounts, exactly. Discounts. Okay. Not just 5 or 10% discount, you have to offer massive discounts. What does that do to your cash flow? Lower. What does that do to your profitability? Brilliant. Well, not so brilliant. Really, if you think about it. Okay. And then what happens with all this? You can't sell the stock, or you sell the stock at a discount. You can't collect money from customers. Look, I'm painting a worst case scenario here. Don't get scared. <laughs> okay. It doesn't always happen like this. It's mismanagement, exactly. And then you have dependence on bank finance. How many banks are willing to step out and give working capital finance to small SMEs? Exactly. How many? And this is the point I want to make here. Because you have to manage your own cash flows. Okay. I always tell people, if you're setting up a business, make sure, and this is ideal, by the way, this is the utopia from the financial management point of view. Make sure it's a business which generates cash from customers upfront and where you have to pay suppliers later. Okay. That's the ideal world. The other way around is going to result in financial dismay and destruction. Managing your cash flows. Five ways of managing your cash flows. Categorize your expenses. Track your expenses. Number three, this is actually quite interesting. Get paid quickly. What is the number one reason among SMEs why they don't get paid quickly by their customers? Can you tell me why? It's a very simple reason, actually. It's absurdly simple. Sorry? They want to make so they sell it. I didn't hear this, sorry? For the sake of selling. For the sake of selling? Well, yes, for the sake of selling. What else? There's no incentive to pay early. What else? There's something else. <laughs> no invoices, exactly. No invoices. <laughs> no invoice. It is, it is as simple as that. It's not about aging statement. It's not about complex analysis. Simply, you render the service. The client was happy with you. Yes? But you forgot to invoice them. It's happened to me. Okay, it's happened in my business. And I'm supposed to be a finance guy, right? Ha ha. Okay. If it happens to me, it can happen to a lot of people as well. Okay? And that's big one big. And what happens? Because you're a small entrepreneur, you go from client to client to client to client. You forgot about the client you serviced a few weeks or months ago, right? And you go to him and say, by the way, oh, I woke up today morning, six months later, and you know, I, I remember I did some training for you, I sold some widgets to you. Can you please pay me? What's he gonna say? What's he gonna say? Where is the invoice? Exactly. And then what is he gonna say? 30 days. Yes, wait for 30 days. And then what are you going to say? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Exactly. You'll follow up on 29th and you'll say wait for another one month. So managing cash. How much cash comes in? How much cash goes out? And when? Really. It's as, sim it's as simple as that. You need to manage your cash flows. You need to plan your cash flows. You need to have visibility. When is the cash going to come in and how much? When is the cash going to go out and how much? It's as simple as that. Most people don't do it. How do you get paid quickly? Number one, invoice, invoice, invoice. After, of course, after you render the service. <laughs> Number two, try and get down payments. Send invoice by email. Accept credit card payments. And offer discount for early payments. This is not, not again, nothing original or path breaking here. I'm just repeating stuff that should be done from a traditional finance point of view. You know it. You should be doing it. And hopefully after you go from here, you'll be doing it rather than thinking about it. Credit cards, of course, they improve accuracy in financial records, they improve efficiency, making payments, accepting payments. How many of you actually use your own credit cards to finance your business? How many? Oh, come on, don't be shy. Michael, I think we need to wake them up. <laughs> come on, how many? I'm sure more, exactly. Now, you know what that does to you? A, it blocks your credit card limits. Number two, you go to a bank for taking money on a personal basis. 
he's going to calculate something called the debt burden ratio or the debt service coverage ratio. And guess what happens? You have a huge debt burden. You can try explaining to him, but you have a huge debt burden. Number three, the hassle of clearing all this from your personal account. So for all those reasons, basically, credit cards, business credit cards, not your personal credit cards, make a lot of sense. Lots of cash flow challenges we talked about, based on the recent visa report. Okay? Cash flow remains the top process improvement desire among businesses, among SMEs. Cards as an efficient payment tool, I'm not going to go too much into it. Ganesh has already gone to it in detail from Visa. He's explained to you how business cards can help you streamline cash flows and make it more efficient. Okay. Cards versus checks, for example, has been explained as well. And now the last one here. How do you improve your cash flow in summary? This is probably the key takeaway from today's press session, actually, the, the, the most important one. Okay. How reliable are your sources of cash? What do you mean reliability? The guy you sold it to, is he going to pay you? Yes? And how much? And when? It's very, very enticing and temp tempting to sell to people just for the sake of revenue. Please don't make that mistake, because revenue is not cash, and cash is not revenue. If, if you sell for the sake of revenue and commissions and showing a high top line, you will pay the price sometimes later in terms of cash flow issues, as I've seen this happen to many companies, SMEs especially. Okay. Is it time to cut down spending? Do you need to cut down expenses or your operations? Hard decision. Is it time to let some employees go? You know, it's not easy, right? But employees are what we in finance call fixed costs. We finance people are very unemotional, right? We don't see employees as assets. We see them as costs. That's the way accounting works. They're fixed costs. They're overheads. And if you have a non-performing employee, time to let him go. And do company operations generate available cash? So to, to conclude, what is more important, cash or revenue? Cash. What is more important, cash or profits? Cash. What do you pay your employees with, cash or profits? What do you pay suppliers with, <laughs> cash or profits? It seems that no one likes profits, or you don't need profits. You need profits, though. So I have a favorite saying in finance, you know? Because everyone's so obsessed with revenue and revenue and profits, right? I'm profitable. I made so much revenue. And this is a very famous saying from finance. It's quite old, actually. I didn't create it. It says, revenue is vanity. You know vanity? It's something you want to show off, right? It's like a BMW or Armani suit. You, know? you want to show off about your iPhone 6. Revenue. I have so much revenue. Okay. Profit is sanity. It means you may have sold 10 billion, but unless you make any profit, that 10 billion doesn't mean anything, right? But cash, my friends, cash is reality. Revenue is vanity. Profits is sanity, but cash is reality. My name is Binod Shankar. Thank you so much for being an audience.